All right, so let's uh, wrap up uh, unit three with parallel and perpendicular lines. Seen them before, but we haven't seen them on a plane. Okay, so we're going to go over some of the some of the uh, observations and facts um, about this. So remember, parallel lines are coplanar, meaning that they both, in this case, they both rest in the x y plane. They're flat, and they do not intersect. Okay. And notice, we know how to find slope of lines, right? So we'll, we would notice that the, the red one here, it goes up to and over 1. So rise over run would be 2 over 1. And then C and D, it would go up to and over 1. Notice I'm starting at the leftmost point. I tend to do that. It helps me be consistent. So it's, we're actually told that these are parallel. So what we notice, and it's not a coincidence, parallel lines have equal slopes. That is e very easy to remember because they're tilted. They have the same angle, right? They're tilted the same way. Uh, perpendicular lines, on the other hand, um, remember they, they meet at a right angle. And let's go ahead and find the slope of the red line, up 2 over 3. Whereas g to h is down 3 over 2. Down 3 over 2. We have a special, those fractions look related, right? Um, the name is opposite reciprocal slopes. So opposite means the, the plus or minus switches, and reciprocal means flip. Um, it flips the fraction. So for example, let's practice opposite reciprocal of two-fifths. You flip the fraction is the reciprocal part, and then you make it the opposite sign. So if it's ever a, a whole number, or, I'm sorry, an integer, which means that it's, you know, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and, like, everything that goes after that. Um, put a 1 down there, so it's a fraction, and then flip it. And opposite reciprocal means that the negative is going to flip to a positive. So this is positive 1 over 4. And 1 over 3 would end up being flip it and change the sign. Okay? So perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes, um, which is a um, tricky, not, not even tricky, Just it's just a long way of saying um, flip the fraction and flip the sign. Flip the fraction, flip the sign. Okay? Um, are these parallel or perpendicular or neither? Well, 1, 2, 3, 1. The slope over here, the first slope, is 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yep, over 2. The slope over here of the second line is 7 over 2. Those are not the same. And they're also not uh, flips and opposites of each other. So this is a neither. They look parallel, right? But they're not. Um, and we got this one, which looks maybe that this is a right angle, but we can't be sure. Um, as you can see, those looked parallel, but they weren't. Uh, let's find the slope. So I'm going to identify good points on each that are clearly on the grid. And we got down one over one, two, three. So the slope of the first line is rise, negative one, over run, three. Whereas this one is one, two, three, one. So you can see that M1, what you do is you flip 
m2 upside down and put a negative. Um, that's a kind of a very like general way of saying it, and it's a little confusing with all the variables. Kind of just look at it like this. What do you notice here? The, the sign's flipped and the fraction's flipped. So that is opposite reciprocal. So these are going to be um, perpendicular, just like we thought. So there is a right angle here. But we didn't know that until we found the slopes. Okay. Um, what about these? How about if we were given an equation? How could we find out if it's um, parallel or perpendicular? Well, one thing, if you want to compare equations, you got to make sure they're in the right form. So let's just say, and this is normally the case, let's just put it in this form and then compare them. So this one's already in that form, but the other one, we need to solve it for y. So we're going to move the stuff that doesn't have y, and then we're going to divide. by negative 2, which I'm going to show a little bit more carefully because this is kind of tricky. So when we divide this by negative 2, this is just y. And if you have stuff added together and you divide it, um, you divide each of them. So this is going to be x over 2 minus 2. So the slope here is 1 because it's really one over one. So the slope, which is in that position is one, but the slope here is one half because X is multiplied by one half. Um, so this would, this would be neither, okay? So put it in a common form and then compare is the, the uh, name of the game. Um, and then here, we got a lot of work to do, don't we? Because we need to find slope twice, two different lines, okay? So I'm gonna do a little bit of copy paste to help speed this up for me. I'm gonna write this for both of them. So I'm gonna do a little copy here. And then, so this is, line one and this is line two and I'm gonna just put these up here Oops. and then I'm just gonna plug in very carefully so um, I'm gonna scratch this out for a second so I don't get myself confused y2 is minus 4 y1 is 2 x2 is minus 1, x1 is minus 3. So the slope of the first line is going to be minus 6 over um, 2. That's pretty tricky. Negative 1 plus 3. So the slope here is negative 3. And now let's scratch F this. I already used that one. And then I got y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So after that work, I get minus 9 over 3, which is minus 3. So the slopes are equal, so they're parallel. Parallel lines have equal slopes. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Um, we got just this bit here, just a few questions. Um, so it says the fact that parallel lines have equal slopes and perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes can help us write equations for lines. So for this one, it wants us to sketch a line just to get the idea down. Sketch a line parallel to the given line through the point. Write its equation in either form. Okay? So... We know that it has the point negative one, three. We know that, we should probably use that. 
And then we need to figure out the slope of this line. It says it needs to be parallel, but we know that parallel lines ought to have the same slope. So if we select two points here, and we see that it's up three over two, that means the slope of both of these lines is, are gonna be three and uh, uh, three halves. So all I gotta do is just do up three over two, and those would be my two points that I can use to construct my parallel lines. It doesn't need to be perfect, um, but that's the idea. And the equation of that line, we really want to use point slope form since we have a point, right? So y1 is 3, this is 3 halves, and x1 is negative 1. So this is the equation of that line. Okay. Um, sketch a line perpendicular to the given line through the given point. So again, we got the given point. Okay. Um, we know that perpendicular means opposite reciprocal slopes, flip and flip. So if I find the slope of this line, which is going to be down to over one, two, three, four, five. So the slope of my existing line, the old line is negative two over five. And I know because of the notes that this is the new slope of my new line is going to be 5 over 2. Um, so with this, you could actually already write the equation. You don't necessarily need to draw it right now. You know the slope and the point. So couldn't you just use point slope form and write in 4? and two, and toss in the new slope. This is it right here. That is a line that goes through that blue one, but it has a slope of five over two. So it turns out if we go, there's not space to go up. So if we go back to and down five, we actually realize that we get this point, this line right here. That makes a right angle. Okay. So I threw in these questions because they kind of give you a visual of what in the world we're doing with the next questions. Okay. Um, so normally I'd take a break at this point and then we'll come back. Um, but since you can pause the video and take a break, do whatever. Um, I know this is a lot in one sitting, but we only have three left. Um, what is the equation of a line parallel to this old line? So we're going to call this one our old line that contains the point. So the way I organize this information is I want to extract the old slope. And since that equation is in MX plus B form, I know the old slope is minus three. I also know that it says it's parallel. So the new slope is minus three. And the question wants my new line to go through a point. And it's negative one eight. So what I'm gonna do is take the two new things and I'm going to create an equation and because it's point slope I'm going to use this equation and I'm just going to stick in very simply. I'm just going to stick in the three pieces of info that I need to. Oops. That's it. Okay. Um, 
So I like to use old and new to keep ourselves a little organized. Let's take a look at the next one. The equation of a line perpendicular to this, which is actually in what's called standard form, variables on the left, that contains a point. So we need to do some work first to get this in a form where we can recognize the slope. And that's going to be to solve for y. Because when I do this here, and I divide every term by 2, I get this is my slope, right? So the old slope is minus 2 over 1. If I want to be perpendicular, I better flip the fraction and change the sign. And we're told of, of a new point that we want to have. So I'm going to go through and just plug it into point slope. So it's going to be y minus the y is the slope x minus the x. Okay, And then finally, kind of like the king of all questions here, is um, perpendicular to an old line that contains a new point in slope intercept form. So it's like the last question, but it's insisting that your final answer be solved for y. Um, so we got that old line there. We need to figure out the slope of the old line. And that's all we need from it. So when you divide by 5, you should get, remember that five divides both terms here, not just one. So it should be two fifths x plus three. So this is all I care about here. I'm just taking advantage of that old line and finding its slope, because that's all I need them for. You can just toss them in the trash after that. Okay, so that's our old slope. And then it wants us to create a new line perpendicular to the old, which contains a point. So perpendicular means that my new slope is going to be flip the fraction, flip the sign. And my new point should always be given to you, which is 4, negative 7. Okay. Um, we got a new slope and a new point, so we can use point slope form, which is this equation. Plug in the y, which is negative 7, the new slope, x minus the x coordinate of the new point. And then from there, to finish the question, we have to put in slope intercept form. So we are going to get rid of the parentheses by distributing. Um, we got negative five, this is a little tricky, but it's not bad. Negative five over two times negative four. Um, you could put a, over one here and just multiply across and get 10. So that should be a plus 10 with the double negative. And finally, we get our answer. There you have it. That is a line that's perpendicular to an old that goes through a new point and is written in slope intercept form. So this is everything. Um, that's a tough question. That's the toughest question I can ask <laughs> from this section. Okay. Um, so you have one like it on the homework. The homework's a little long, but it's good practice. Um, 